Well, hello, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Well, we're in day two now, and uh, in the last episode, we'd just come to the square. We came to the square. The pioneers were already lined up. What? Is somebody not here yet? Mmm, no. All here. She looked around at her brave pioneer troops. All right, go stand somewhere. Weird. Why did she tell me there was no more sleeping spaces? While the chief was running her mouth about our plans for the week, I stared at the people. A few heads away from me stood Electronic. A little further, Lena and Slavia. At the end of the line, far from all these heads that apparently were between the people, Ulana and in Alisa. Everyone I'd met was here. Olga spoke about some competitions, and I turned my attention to the monument. Gender. I couldn't remember any revolutionary with a similar name. He had a weird posture, too, as if he was looking around with distrust, maybe contempt, or even disdain. Probably some local leader. Daydreaming again? Slavia brought me back to reality. Or at least brought me back to this bar. Olga stood nearby. Still remember the plan for the week? The plan? I will never forget the plan! Perfect. She looked at Slavia. Did you bring it? Yeah. Slavia handed me a piece of paper. It's a checklist. There are four tasks to check off today. Do it all today. Before you start, sign up for a club. There are five things to do today. There are some clubs in the clubhouse. Some have nails in, some don't. And a musical club in the separate building. We keep it in a separate building because it makes too much noise. Then, Visit the infirmary. And finally, visit the library. Got it? These seven things that are your four things to do today. Yes. The checklist seemed like a good chance to find out something since I had to go to places I hadn't been before. Then come on. Start right now. What about lunch? Don't worry, I'll bring you more sandwiches. Just don't look inside them. The checklist is more important. Good luck. They departed too fast for me to ask anything else. Missed breakfast? Now I'll miss lunch too. This ain't good. Maybe I'll arrange it in time somehow. Lunch starts at 1pm. Then again, if I go there, I might miss a place from my checklist. Okay, it's too early to go to the canteen anyway. Ooh. Ooh. The choices. So, we have... Clubhouses, the music club. Oh, I see, this is where people live. So... Looks like very much that somebody's put a bag over our head. All right. And there's an infirmary, a library, a kitchen dining hall. Mm, so we can start at the clubhouse or we can start at the music club. What the hell? Let's go to the music club. The music club was a small one-level building. It was located some distance from the other camp buildings. I opened the door and entered without hesitation. Don't you want to stop here? The thought of a music club located some distance away from everyone else doesn't really bode well for the music, does it? There are enough instruments for a whole orchestra here. Drums, guitars, even a piano, and apparently a plastic bag. I spent some time looking closely at every instrument, wanting to guess the time period where they were from but suddenly heard a crawling sound coming from underneath the piano. A girl, or at least the rear end of one, seems like she was looking for something. 
She was standing on all fours in such a suggestive prose that I almost had my trust and I, I hesitated to speak at first. Excuse me. Ah, who's there? She started to stand up, but the bottom g of the piano prevented her from doing so. I'm glad we've had the update that's got rid of all the typos. Ouch! She struggled out. I was quite disappointed. Sorry I scared you. It's nothing. Oh, you've got a checklist. You must be new here. Ah, yes. My name is Biku. Don't ask why I have a Japanese name when I'm Russian. No, really, I'm serious. Nobody believes me, but it's my real name. My mother is Japanese. I told you not to ask me. I told you anyway. My dad met her when he was building. Well, it wasn't him who was building. He's an engineer. And he was working on a nuclear power plant there. Or a dam, or a bridge, or a tunnel, or whatever. She was talking so fast, she swallowed half the words she tried to pronounce. I'm Semyon. Great! Want to be in our club? There's only me here, but it'll be two of us then. Do you play anything? When I became antisocial, I bought a guitar and learned a few chords, but then I forgot about it, since I quit anything that required more than a couple hours to learn. You know, I wasn't planning to do anything like that, really. Oh, it's okay. I'll teach you. Maybe a trumpet, for example. How about a violin? I know it all, honestly. There was no point in arguing with the orchestra girl, since there was only another cascade of words waiting to blast me. Hey, I'll think about it. Can you just sign it for now? Yes, yes, sure, give it to me. Be sure to come around. I sing too. I'll sing you some Japanese folk songs. Or maybe if you're not into that, something more contemporary. Sure. Thanks. Gotta go now. Of course, come anytime. Well, with you crawling underneath the piano, there's a fairly good chance of that. The end of her sentence stayed inside. It might have been nice to hang around with a guitar in the evening, but in such company? I turned to leave and came face to face with Alyssa. She eyed me suspiciously. Then she eyed my face. Why did you come? The checklist. Got it signed? Yes. Then move it! Alyssa went inside and I hurried to leave the place. Right, so that's the music club. Um, uh, we can try the clubhouse, the library, the infirmary. Well, yeah, yeah, if I'm stood there, then I'm going to the clubhouse. I went to the clubhouse. There you see, I was right. To tell the truth, I never really liked extracurricular activities. At school, I used to find any excuse to skip extra classes. At university, I had no interest in participating in the student council. I wasn't interested in boxing, aero modeling, or sewing. So I came here just to check off the box. Nobody was there. I found myself in something like the a hut of a junior robot enthusiast. There were wires and simple printed circuits scattered everywhere chips and on the table proudly stood an oscillograph. Actually that looks like a stereo to me. I heard voices from another room and then two pioneers appeared. One was electronic, the other one I didn't know. Oh hi Samyan, I've been expecting you. It seems he knows everything about everyone. Why were you expecting me? Well, of course, because you, you come to sign up for our cybernetics club, didn't you? He didn't let me answer. And this is Shurik. He's in charge here. I assume there's only two of you in the club. Well, you can say that's three now. Shurik came up to me and assertively offered his hand. His face was somewhat familiar. Welcome to the club! Yes. Now, I'll show you around. Make yourself at home. Uh, guys, I just wanted to... We're always welcoming new members. He such it, said it in such a way that the anthem of the Soviet Union suddenly started playing in my head. 
It's amazing. I even remembered the words. In the first grade, I had a textbook with the lyrics on the back. Uh, no. I just wanted you to sign my checklist. You sign up for the club, we'll sign your checklist. He grinned. I was getting ready for a long and boring argument, but then I heard someone enter. I looked back and saw Slavia. Ah, Simeon, I hope they're not giving you any trouble. She narrowed her eyes, looking at the future of the motherland's robotics industry. I know these two. They can. Well, you know, actually, I just needed to get my checklist signed. I decided to take advantage of the situation. No problem. Give it to me. Slavia took to the paper and marched up to Shurik. Sign it. Hold on, we're not done yet. You're done. Sign it now, you slag. She gave Shurik such a threatening look that it made him lose every possible objection. And possibly bladder control. He wrote some squiggles on the checklist. I thanked Slavia, then moved on in a mellow mood. Right, library. Actually, I love reading, but spending my days in a library under the current circumstances was well beyond my scope. So I'd better hurry up with this checkpoint. As I stepped inside, a memory from my childhood emerged in my head. It was very vivid. I'm seven or eight years old. I'm at the library with my mother. While she's looking through the books I might need for my studies, I'm sitting in the corner and looking through the collection of comic books. Back then I didn't know why they had so many, or why I couldn't take some with me. The notion of collective property was something my mind hasn't grasped yet to that age. However, back then the whole concept of property was pretty hazy to me. Memory seemed even stranger now, while I was standing in this particular camp where they might have managed to build communism in three years. Soviet symbolism was all over the place, and the shelves were full of related literature. Of course, I wasn't planning to read any of these. Getting acquainted with a full collection of books by Marx was the last thing on earth I could think of. Where's the librarian? I didn't spend much time looking for her. Well, I hoped it was her. Indeed, I started looking under the tables, just in case. I looked closely. Short hair, thick glasses, a rather cute face, a line of drool coming from the corner of her mouth. She was snoring so peacefully I couldn't just wake her up. I can wait. If she doesn't wake up in half an hour, maybe then. I couldn't just sit there, so I took a random book from the nearest bookshelf. Arthur Schopenhauer, The World as Will and Representation. I opened it roughly in the middle and started reading. The life of man, with its endless upkeep, wants and suffering, is to be regarded as the explanation for and paraphrase of the procreative act, i.e. the absolute claim of the will to live, and furthermore, it is also the reason man owes nature his death and thinks with anxiety of this debt. Is this not the evidence that our existence involves guilt? At any rate, we shall always exist from time to time, paying with death for our birth. We always exist and alternately bear all the joy and sorrow of life, since neither of us can pass us, since neither of both can pass us without some effect. That is the result of our stated will to live. Thus, the fear of death which in spite of all our miseries of life holds us firmly to it, is really elusive, but just as elusive is the impulse which has attracted us to it. This attraction itself may seem objectively as the mutual longing glances of two lovers. Are they the purest expression of will to live? In its affirmation, how gentle and tender it is. It wants happiness and quiet pleasure and mild joys for itself. For others, for all. Someone knocked on the door. I closed the book quickly and put it back in its place. What a nice habit, knocking on the door. I should pick it up. I picked up the door, and it was Lena. 
Ew. Hi. I smiled. Perhaps too many teeth. Hi. I just wanted to return a book. She had a copy, the copy of Gone with the Wind that I saw yesterday. Oh, Sienya is sleeping. I'll come back later. I'm awake. I turned around in surprise to look at her. She eyed me closely from behind her table. <laughs> what is it you wanted? I need you to check here, he said, unbuckling my trousers. Give it here. She quickly signed the paper and gave it back to me. She had this look on her face that made me want to keep quiet. Lena came up to return a book. I thanked Xenia and went out. Alright, so, two new people. To the infirmary. What's the point of visiting the infirmary? Infirmary! Words! Hey, hey. My health was fine. The fresh local air clearly did me some good. I felt fresher than usual. I also felt about ten years younger than usual. That was probably helping. But I just have to visit it. I entered. A common infirmary, like my school doctor's room. Hubba hubba. A middle-aged woman sat at the table. Obviously, she was a nurse. She gazed intently at me, assessing me while continuing to write something. Well, hello, Pioneer, said the nurse without being distracted from her work. Good afternoon, ma'am. I have something. Here, let me undo my trousers. Sit down, please. I looked around the room. On the couch, I sat down. Strip. Could you have asked that before I sat down? She said all of it with an even tone. What for? To inspect. To assolitate? Assolitate. To check on your health. You know. Now look to the left and cough. By the name. My name is Violetta. But you can call me Viola. And you can call me any time. She turned to me. What are you waiting for? Strip. But that means I have to stand up. But I have no health issues. I've got this. I neatly gave her the paper. Later. She took the stethoscope off her neck, seeming like she intended to probe me with it. But then somebody knocked at the door. I've never been so disappointed in my life. The nurse answered unwillingly. Come in. In a moment, the door opened widely and Electronic rushed inside. I was so glad I hadn't got round to taking my trousers off. Hello. I fell during the football game. Nonsense, of course, but uh, I'm okay. But Olga... There was a massive bruise under Electronic's eye. He'd obviously been arguing with Oliana. I doubt this could be a football injury. Sit down. I'll have a look. She said to him, And you, pass me your checklist. The nurse quickly signed it and continued, If something hurts, or starts to throb, come to me immediately, Pioneer. I decided not to answer and went out, closing the door behind me. That nurse is surely something else. Ellipsis. Finally, I got all the signatures. Now I had to go back to Olga and give it to her. She was sitting in front of her cabin reading a book. 
doesn't look like a good role model for the perfect pioneer that she was planning to turn me into. I wonder if her responsibilities extended beyond giving fiery speeches at the lineup, scolding Ulyana and getting involved in my moral, physical and ideological growth. Here. I offered her my checklist. She placed it in her pocket without even looking at the signatures. Great. I could have signed it myself without going anywhere. Perfect. So, did you meet our nurse? Yes. For some reason, her question sent shivers down my spine. Which club have you signed up for? I didn't. I need to think first. That's a pity. It's vital for you to sign in somewhere tomorrow. Of course, sure. Right. It's time to go to dinner. About time I was getting hungry. I headed to the canteen together with Olga. And I think we're going to stop there. We'll pick up at dinner time next week. I wonder what's going to be scuttling under a cutlet this time. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I certainly have. I have been Simon Parsons. This has been Endless Summer. Thank you. And good night.